Hello, everyone. Lawrence Fleming again with another video. I don't really know how to get into this, so I'm just going to jump right in. Do you know when you're going to die? Why do I ask? Well, I've got some information down below that we're going to talk about as I get down my script that I'm reading from. We all want to know to a degree. Some don't want to know. They want to be surprised. Frankly, I wouldn't mind knowing if it was a long way off. But then the closer it got, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? So the bottom line is, is we don't know. And we're not going to find out until it happens. Some people that are sick and have been told by their doctors, you've got months to live, days to live, whatever. They kind of know, but even the doctors have been proven wrong many times. So we're going to look at what the gospel says about it. We're going to look about what I have to say about it. And you can make up your own mind what you want to believe about it. The bottom line is we're all going to die. We're destined. The moment we're born, that's the end of the road for us. And for some, it's sooner than others. Many that die are not prepared because they didn't expect it. If you like this video, click like. You want to hear more, subscribe to this channel. Of course, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified when I release a new video. It's important that we do think about the future. That is why I'm going to ask you to pray for me as I produce these videos that God will inspire them. I sometimes throw in my two cents worth, but I try to back it up with a scripture because you don't want me teaching you. You want God teaching you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Well, this is a bit of a morbid subject, but there is a good ending to it. And that's why I want you to stay around to the end and you'll see what it is. We're talking about death. We're all going to experience it. In this world right now, and you can go up and look it on the internet, there are roughly 60 million deaths around the world every year. Now, of course, there are different reasons. Old age, born with problems that they couldn't live with. I don't know if abortions are in this, but it doesn't matter. It's still a big number. If you think about it, a football stadium can hold 60 to 80,000 people. We're talking about 100 football fields worth of people, stadiums worth of people. That's a lot of people every year. So it's important that we think about what we're going to do to prepare for that. And I don't mean going and packing your bags because they won't do you any good. But there's other things that you can do. From an earthly view, to make sure you prepare for that and, and make sure it's a way off, eat right, exercise, and try not to do stupid things. You can also have a will. If you've got a family that you want to take care of, you want to have a will. Not having one can leave them in dire straits as the government will get in and mess with it. And you don't want that. A will will solve that. That's about our earthly bodies. What about your spiritual death? You can avoid that one entirely. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But if you don't have your spiritual forever taken care of, you're going to regret it for the rest of your lives. Let's look at uh, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody is destined to have a spiritual death at the end of your life. You're going to have a physical death and a spiritual death at the end of your life. That doesn't mean you don't continue on, but there's a path set for those that continue on in the spirit and those that don't. A good path and a bad path, and we won't go into that here. 
Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So there is a way out. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Your physical death can't help you. Maybe. There's a trick. I'll help you with that here in a little bit. But let's continue on. There's, there's nothing you can do to earn your salvation for your spirit. It's a gift of God. It says so right there in Romans. All you have to do is accept it. John 3.16. We're going to also look at verse 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. In verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Most people stop at verse 16, but 17 is important too. You get the motive for God sending his son down here. Let's take a look at uh, Hebrews 9.27. And inasmuch as it's appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly wait him. In other words, for those that he's saved, your sins are gone. They're not buried to be dug up. They're cast aside, never to be brought back up. If your sins are coming to your mind and they're constantly bringing you down, the ones that you did in the past, and you've confessed those to Jesus and you're a Christian, it's Satan doing that. And you can tell him to get out of your life. As long as your heart and spirit are with Jesus at the moment, you can tell Satan to get out in the name of Jesus and to leave you alone. And he has to. He has to obey the Spirit of God. He hasn't got any power compared to God. He's got a lot of power compared to you, but none compared to God. He has to obey. Just tell him to get rid of him. Just get out of here. And it may not be Satan. It may be one of his workers, but it doesn't matter. It's the same family of bad, bad doers that you want to just get rid of. Focus forward on Jesus and not backwards on anything, including what sins you may have committed. It doesn't matter how big or small they are. They're all forgiven if you're repentant. Now, you can fail and go back and then stop, repent, and get back again. We're going to do that, especially if we've been sinning for a long time. You're going to find the, the urge to pull you back into it. Just keep digging yourself back out, and God will be there. Jesus will be there, open arms to receive you. That's the key about it. And then they're forgiven again. And we're told to pray daily for forgiveness of sin, so that means we can still sin daily, or we wouldn't have any need for that. Like I said, Jesus throws all the sin records away. Satan brings them up, but you can ignore them. Today, you can avoid death altogether, perhaps. This is a little trick I told you about. If you're a Christian right now, and Christ comes back for his church, which he promised he would do, then you can avoid death. He's going to remove his church from this planet before all hell breaks loose, literally. Once the tribulation starts, at some point, he's going to open the pit of hell. And I've talked about this before. The pit of hell is so bad that when Jesus confronted the demons, the demon-possessed people, and the demons talked through them, saying, don't cast us into the pit. Even the demons feared the pit of hell, and God's going to open it for the earth to be punished. As a wake-up call for those that are about ready to accept Christ and just weren't quite ready before the rapture, they can still be saved. People can be saved during this time. But those that harden their hearts, there's no hope for them at this point. Fortunately, it doesn't last that long. The entire 70th day of Daniel, as it's called, only lasts seven years. 
the second half of it is called the Great Tribulation. That is so bad that God said if he didn't shorten the days, no one would live. That's how bad it is. But we don't have to put up with any of it as Christians. You don't have to put up with it. You can become a Christian today if you're not. And if you are a Christian, you need to be helping everybody you know friends and family, make sure they're all Christians so that way we can meet in the sky when Jesus come for, comes for us and not wonder what happened to everybody after we're all gone. It would be a good day for us. So, can you put your trust in God? Can you put your trust in Jesus? Talk to him. He can hear you. Invite Jesus in. Speak to him directly. Mean it from your heart because that's important. If you just say the words, God will know. I can't tell what you're thinking. I can't judge a person's heart, but God can. Jesus can. So you want to be honest with them. And if you say this simple little prayer and mean it, you can be part of God's family and miss the tribulation time frame. You can be part of the rapture. And maybe not die because I think it's coming soon enough that people can get on board this flight out of here. Now, people are dying every day. People are dying today that aren't going to make the rapture. If the rapture doesn't happen until tomorrow, everybody's going to die today. It doesn't matter. When the rapture comes, it also says that the dead in Christ will rise first. So there's some good news for that. Okay, here's your prayer. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sinful ways, and I ask you to come into my heart. I accept your free gift of salvation that you paid for with your blood on the cross. I want to be a Christian. I want to be born again. I want eternal life. That's all it takes. You can't earn it. It's a free gift. If you prayed that, leave me a note down below. I want to pray with you and, and see if I can help out. But you can also get your friends to pray the same prayer. It's important. It's eternity. So until we meet in the clouds, God bless.